Hi everyone, we're going to do some pen and wash today. Um, so I've got a really nice photo um, which was from the gardens at Scotney Castle. Um, and it's got a really nice staircase coming up and an arched doorway. Um, it's tricky with perspective but I want you to have a go really looking at the angles of the steps and seeing the steps coming down. Um, this angle is really good. It's good practice for you to have a go and pen and wash means we can make it quite loose and rustic. Um, so what I've done first of all is just very loosely drawn it out. The trickiest bit with the perspective are these curves here and it's taken me a few times to get those but I have eventually got there. So loosely draw out the doorway, the steps and the curve of this wall then just quickly sort of pencil in where the foliage is coming onto the onto the side of the wall and over the steps so you've got that so you've got an idea and then we're going to come straight in with some colours so colours wise I've got raw sienna, burnt sienna, a grey brown colour which I've made with burnt sienna and cobalt blue, a little bit of sepia some cobalt blue and some sap green. So the first thing I'm going to do before we go in with the pen is to come in and get some texture on this wall. So I'm going to use a little bit of clean film. So I'm wetting the wall basically this is this was the old castle in the garden so I'm getting all of that there I'm coming over where the foliage would be as well I'm not touching the door so I'm going over the steps over where the foliage would be the wall again over where the foliage would be. I don't need to be too precise but I want you to make sure on this side you're leaving this edge dry. I'm going to come in with some colours. So firstly the raw sienna It's all about just getting this bit of background colour and texture in at this stage. And you can take this raw sienna under where all the foliage would be, that's absolutely fine. trick is to not be too precise with it. This is just getting the effect for the wall um, so I don't need to worry too much about the foliage at this stage. I just don't want there to be lots of hard lines. And what you do tend to get is you see a little bit of the background through the foliage anyway. So by by making sure you've got that there, you've got that background colour. I'm going to come in with a burnt sienna. So. I'm sort of doing brick marks but nothing too precise. I'm just looking where the warmth is really and making sure that I've got that in. I'm just going to come down the inside of the doorway with the burnt sienna. Gives it a bit more warmth there. So I've used my round number 10 up to now 
I'm just going to swap to my number six now. I've just got a little bit of grey. So the number six just means it's not moving as much. And I'm just focusing on getting little dabs in. You can always add more, you can't take it away. Not easily anyway, so just go steady. And then I've got a tiny bit of sepia. This sepia is quite thick. And I'm going to use the sepia pen later as well. So that's going to work quite nicely together. So when I'm applying this now, it's not going to spread as much. Which is a good thing. So I'm just picking out darker areas. This bit's all a little bit about balance. It's just getting enough that it feels more balanced. You can always add more later. Okay, and I'm going to go up a bit of clean gold. You can use several pieces, it's quite a big area. So what I'm thinking about now is texture. So not so much bricks, but texture. So I'm just going to scrunch this on. And wherever it's, it's folding on here, it's going to leave a line. That's going to work really nicely as texture. scrunch then the trick is to just leave it so I'm going to go and get a cuppa and I'll come back and have a look later okay so I've peeled that off and I've got a really nice subtle texture there I don't know if it will show that well on the camera um, but I'm going to work with that later I'm just going to get a little bit of a background in here now the trick with pen and wash is to do as much as you can before you start coming on with the pen. I think it means that you you add less pen work. You don't need as much as you think. So I'm going to get a bit of a background on. So a little bit of cobalt blue bit in the sky and I'm going to bring this down further so this bit here is where the lighter Ivy's catching just at the side. I just want to leave that dry. It's quite a nice effect. I'm trying to do this in, in a couple of stages. So I'm just going to dampen just there so I don't end up with a hard edge. Then I haven't rinsed my brush and I've dipped into raw sienna. So I've got a little bit of blue on there. 
and a bit of raw sienna it's a good combination for a distant tree it's fairly thick the raw sienna I want it to stay put I can dip into a little bit more blue so I need to refill my brush and I'm just coming down and creating this foliage effect with the gaps these very sort of distant trees now I'm dipping into some sap green that's a bit bright so I'll dip into a tiny bit of cobalt blue as well don't want it to take over this is in the distance so you've got to be a bit more careful and then I'm coming over these but not hitting everywhere so that you've got bits of light still showing so you're aiming for a combination of both colours showing through Then I'm going to dab into the sepia and where I can see darker bits I'm going to bring that in so that's giving you a bit of shadow and a bit of depth in there What you'll find is as it's still damp you can do these um, bits of tree trunking as well as long as you, you're working with quite thick sepia that will work so if I get a I'm going to use a tiny bit of indigo So you just need to make sure it's nice and thick. I'm just going to get these little bits of branches in. Anything dark will work. So this is just a bit of indigo on my palette. But the indigo, the sepia. You want them to stay nice and thin, so I haven't got any water on my brush as such. It's just the paint. Just to get those little bits in. You could do this with a pen, but it tends to look a little bit too prominent for a background. So you're much better, if you can, to do it with, with a brush. That's enough there. I'll dry that one off. Okay, so that's all dry now. I'm going to look, just work a little bit into the steps. So this is just some sepia. Hopefully you'll still be able to see your pencil lines. So I'm coming down the edge of the steps first. Just to start to just give a little bit of definition so that's I'm using a round number six and then 
I'm just coming in with a wet brush so I'm touching the edge spreading it further than it needs to go and it's just going to start to define a few edges here and there really so on this one I'm coming this side because the dark is then going to set out the dark is what really sets this out then there's a little bit more on this side of the wall so we're going to just grab a little bit here and it's what will happen is you will see different things and pull different things out which is absolutely fine You just want that little bit of extra definition before you come in. With the pen. So I'm just using my round number six to apply the paint. My round number ten to apply a bit of water after. So if I just do a little bit on each of these steps it's going to start to you can pull the paint further as well it's just giving that definition shadow on that side a little bit of shadow around the door pull that out a little bit Then we've got this shadow up here. So I'm pulling that there. The temptation to start to pull out bricks is quite quite extreme, but you, you just want to do little bits. And we're going to do the same with the pen. You can very easily get carried away. Okay, I'm going to dry that off. Okay, so next we've got a little bit of this brownie grey on the door. So I'm coming straight on to dry with this. And then, so I've hit a few places and I'm just going to hit a few places with water so that it's not all the same colour. 
and then if I get my round number six I'm just going to come into a little bit of sepia just get a few bits a bit darker Okay, I'll dry that one off. Okay, so I just want to get a little bit of base on now before we come in with the pen and then maybe a little bit of sponging. So I'm just going to wet into this bottom area. You can, you can do these individually. Um, it's just because I wanted to get that little bit of a base on. I'm doing it fairly quickly. And then I'm going to bring a bit of water up here. You can go further than you actually want the paint to go because it will have a nicer effect to do that. So basically I just want to start to get a little bit of a base in. So this is just sap green. And I'm just stroking it on. Gonna pop a little bit of gamboge yellow just in where it's a little bit brighter just along this top section sap green, I haven't quite got enough. Mm. So you can have a few hard edges, you want to minimise them at this stage because you're going to come in with a pen and you're going <clears> to <throat> come in with a sponge or further brush work so it's worth minimising them at this stage. Sweep a little bit of green just at the bottom there. <clears throat> then over to this side. It's still wet enough. Just just stroke in. If you find it's dried, you can come on with a little bit more water. This bit I'm thinking I will just leave because it's quite wispy so I want that to be quite soft in there. going to dip into a tiny bit of cobalt blue into this this bottom corner just to give a bit more depth in there
Okay, I'll dry that one off. Okay, so I've, I've dried that off and I'm going to start to come in with the pen now. So your main focus of the picture is the doorway. So I want you to focus on getting the doorway right. So this is just a permanent drawing pen. It's a Faber-Castell one. Could be any pen though. Could use a biro if you don't have drawing pens. Remember you are not outlining. You are creating dark areas and texture. And this bit Temptation to outline is always there, but you're not doing that. We can put the marks in the doorway. Bit of a handle on. <clears throat> Get this shadow line in here. So I've got this bit coming in. This bit of the wall. I can break in to create some shadow underneath this foliage. You're picking out little bits now. You can do little bits of brickwork, but just not a lot. Start to pick out some of that detail. If you outline the lot, you just end up. It looks quite cartoony. So it's it's about picking out little bits. Accentuating the paintwork is much easier. So I'm just picking out some of the little bits of ivy now. few indications of brickwork but nothing major then come down towards the steps so you can accentuate those darks you can accentuate little bits of the step but I don't want you to go around each edge the darker bits are the bits you want to pick out really want to pick out just enough for it to hold together. A little bit here and there. Come around this side, let's have a look at this dark bit of the Accentuate that a bit.
we'll start to create a few leaves. much as you want but the more you do the more illustrative it becomes rather than loose pen and wash so don't go over the top always stop before you think you should stop and have a good look and you can add a bit more paint okay I'm gonna get my sponge ready okay so I've picked up a darker green so it's just sap green with a bit of cobalt blue and I'm just going to break this area up with a bit of a sponge you can do this in several layers you need to let it dry in between though and then it's just going to give it a bit more depth and break through that I'm going to drag a little bit through here so it's got a bit of a different texture Okay, so I just, after that I dried, sponged on a little bit more of a darker mix of the blue and sap green and then a little bit, whilst that was still damp, a little bit of sepia just in places and dragged through a little bit of sepia that side as well. So the last thing that I want to do is to come in with, so this is some Gambo's Yellow with a tiny bit of white acrylic ink and I'm just going to dot in so this is a number six, little bits of light. So because I've popped a little bit of the white acrylic ink in, it's just making it a little bit more opaque so it's sitting on top of the watercolour. It's not essential you do this if you if you're happy with the effect you don't have to come in and do any of these additional bits of light it's just that I can see them and I quite like them so I'm going to pop them in you could if you wanted to start at the beginning and, and masked out some bits of light I'm not a huge lover of masking fluid I'm just dabbing really I'm not trying to replicate too much the actual shape of the leaves so I don't want it to be too precise everything needs to be loose don't be afraid to come over bits of the pen it's quite a good way to break pen work up if you think you've gone over the top with your pen work just lots and lots of little dabs so we've got these few yellow ones and then I've mixed up some with some sap green and I'm going to put a touch of cobalt blue in just to make it a bit bluer and then I can come in with some bits for these bigger bits of ivy down here just, just 
gives it a bit of, of a difference. I think sometimes with the sponge it all looks very similar and there's a lot of different foliage here so it's quite nice to pick out a few different little bits. And then this side we've got some with longer leaves so I'm going to pop a few of those in. I think it might be buddlier. Looks like a buddlier type leaf. Again not too precise. I've kept all this quite neutral really because I want the door to be the main focal point. You take a little bit of, you can dot in a little bit of this. Yeah, we colour this side as well just to give a nice edge. I'm quite happy with that. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next week.